The small exclusive club of rock musicians that can legitimately claim to be among the very best in the world got four new members this past year, the British rock quartet Coldplay, led by singer Chris Martin. In the midst of a deep recession in a music industry fighting for survival, the group's fourth straight multi-platinum album, Viva La Vida, has sold an astounding seven million copies and snagged seven nominations for tonight's Grammy Awards, including Best Album, Best Song, and Best Record. Its current world tour is virtually sold out, as we found out when we followed them from Orlando and Chicago to London and Belfast. London, just before Christmas, the soaring melodies, the thumping beat of the music, and the quirky charisma of lead singer Chris Martin had the crowd on its feet. We rely more on enthusiasm than actual skill. Whatever you do, do it enthusiastically, and people will like it more. I can't dance like Usher, I can't sing like Beyonce, I can't write songs like Elton John. We can do the best we can with what we've got. And so that's what we do, we just go for it. They're all barely 30, but they've already been together for 12 years. Martin and guitarist Johnny Buckland, bass player Guy Berryman, and drummer Will Champion. By the time this tour ends, they will have played before three million people, but you wouldn't know it from talking to them. When we first met Martin in Buckland at this pub in Northwest London, which served as their first office, we found them modest and self-effacing. Look, you guys are one of the biggest groups in the world right now. How did that happen? There's a lot of people asking the same question. <laughs> All we do is... We try really, really hard. The other reason why we do well is because you two are still on holiday. So... They're back in March, They're though. back in March, so, you know, <laughs> as soon as they come back, we, we drop down the ladder a bit. So we're in our last week of uh, substitute teaching. The band's life still revolves around this neighborhood where they first met. Four middle-class college boys, all sons of teachers, who share the love of music, and this flat on the Camden Road. As you can see, the decoration is incredible. <laughs> we, we formed our band in that room. We wrote most of our songs in that room. Something else happened in that room. <laughs> I hide my head. They signed a record deal upon graduation, and most of the songs written here ended up on their debut album, which shot to number one on the British charts. Your very first album, you had a worldwide hit mm -hmm. in Yellow. Mm -hmm. um, What's it about? Who knows. You don't know? I've got no idea. I still think about that every day. <laughs> I love playing it. I love the tune. I love the chords. I love the balloons that we use live. But I still can't quite work out what it's about. <laughs> Even if I don't really feel like playing it, those guys have paid their ticket money. They want to see us play yellow, so we'll play it. You want to give them what they came for. Yeah, and something extra, because when we look out from the stage, you can't really see people so much, but you can see the light of the doorway of all the exits. So the way to tell at the beginning of a tour which songs are working and which ones aren't is if you see people, people's silhouettes in the exits, then it means you're probably not playing the right song, because a lot of people are going to get a hot dog or whatever. So I know we're doing okay when, I, when all the exits are clear. That's my way of judging it, the silhouette factor. There was certainly no one leaving after the first few notes of Clocks, their Grammy-winning record of the year for 2003, and one of the hits off their second album.
all exceptional musicians, their distinctive alternative rock sound has found a huge mainstream audience that spans several generations of fans. Not even Chris Martin quite knows how to classify the music, the band, or himself, as we found out. And you decided to be a rock star when? Well, I don't like the word rock star, the two words rock star. Uh, not even soft rock star, <laughs> not even limestone star. It's a, uh, I don't like those words. Why? Because I don't wear the right pants for that. <laughs> you got, you got to wear the right trousers if you're going to be a rock star. You won't catch this band in tight leather pants or snorting drugs off the back of a stripper. The British press often rags on them for being too earnest and boring. They are extremely conscientious, dedicated to their music, and leave a small carbon footprint. They all share equally in the profits, and Will Champion and Guy Berryman are thrilled that Chris Martin gets all the attention. You know, I couldn't imagine coming out of my house and there being photographers out there. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be able to to just walk away from that. It's a, a blessing to be in this band and to not be the singer. Mm -hmm. They seem perfectly happy to let you have yeah. the spotlight. I know, and it annoys me. My dream is that Will suddenly says, I'm going to be a flamboyant homosexual drummer and wear outrageous clothes and say outrageous things. You'd like that? I would love nothing more. <laughs> Partly just to see how it looked, but also because, you know, so, you know, sometimes you want a bit of help. Someone wrote that Chris Martin is like watching an unsteady trapeze act. One moment brimming with self-confidence, anxious and angst-ridden the next. Well, Steve, this is our home. We saw some of it at the band's Camden recording studio, where he was both structured and random. A bundle of kinetic energy always on the move. One of the things that surprises me is you're out on tour, you're not even finished with this tour, and you're already working on the next album? Yeah. Yeah. Take yeah. a break? No. Take a break when I'm 40. <laughs> or 35. Not now. Not now. I've got to keep writing songs as long as I've got hair. Because <laughs> once it goes, then I won't be able to go on stage. <laughs> He's a compulsive warrior and list maker. He sends himself electronic messages and scrawls notes on scraps of paper, on his hands, and anything else that's available, lest he forget some brilliant idea. He has notes written on the piano. Yeah, no, but this is just the beginning, so in, a, in six months, so we'll be covered, I think. And you have to repaint the piano? Yeah. When we finish something, we repaint. Like many artists, he is openly, gloriously neurotic. Then we have all our rules here. We've got our rules. So you can't have more than... 42 minutes. These are just things we have to remind ourselves of all the time. The rules are important. See, look at it, look at rule number six. Not many interviews. That's a rule. <laughs> always, always keep mystery. Always keep mystery. I feel like I've shown you my underpants. <laughs> this, this, is, this is private stuff. With the band in the middle of a tour, most of the new music is being worked on during sound checks before concerts. It's a collaborative effort with Martin and Johnny Buckland leading the way, but everyone has a say. The song of Evil of Evil, the one we just did last year. You say, listen, man, I got this, and it goes. say something like that right and johnny says it drives well. him crazy if johnny says he likes it then i have to show it to will which is one of the things i fear most in my life so this is like the u.n security council one veto and it's yeah like, one oh, veto yeah, and right? it goes on his solo album <laughs> given their professed history with viva la vida and their past track record writing songs the band was stunned when not one, but two different artists claimed that Coldplay had plagiarized part of the melody. The band says any similarities are a coincidence, and they have refused to settle out of court. I think that the way to deal with these things is if you know, if you know it's not true, then you just have to say, I'm really sorry, but it isn't true. That's it. The, the other alternative is like a seven hour rant about why it isn't true and how it's just not possible. But I think, for the purposes of today, it's better just to say, we just would never do that. 
Martin is used to some unwanted attention. Besides being rich and famous, he is also married to one of the most beautiful women in the world, Academy Award-winning actress Gwyneth Paltrow. It's made them pray for the paparazzi with whom Martin is frequently clashed and fodder for the tabloids, which regularly run stories that the marriage and the band are on the verge of breaking up. So what's it like living in the tabloid world? One week you're divorced, the next week your band's broken up. It's terrible. That's what they're saying now. I'm glad I'm not me. <laughs> that, by the way, is a Bob Dylan quote, in case you thought I thought of that. Right, and we shouldn't take these articles about the band breaking up and you and your wife breaking up. All I can tell you is, I mean, it's news to me. The couple seemed perfectly happy when we were around at this concert in London, but they don't like cameras present when they're together, refuse to sit for joint interviews, and insist on keeping their careers separate and their private lives private. Your public lives are completely separate. Yeah. And you did that because... Well, that's just the way it feels best. This, is this the one thing that you hate talking about? The well, you can see from my body language that it makes me really uncomfortable. Okay, we'll stop now. This is the bit which, in an outtake, where people storm out. I'm not storming out, Steve. I like you very much. <laughs> but I, I don't know how to talk about this stuff, to be honest. I don't know how to deal, deal with it. As they head out on the next leg of the tour, there is no road weariness or talk of exhaustion. In fact, they've been thinking about a song for next Christmas. They're all still young enough to find this fun, enthusiastic about what lies ahead, and confident that they're not yet as good as they're going to be. I want to show you this thing. Uh, okay. So it goes, six feet of snow and water deep. I wish you'd let your trouble make the perfect song which of course will never happen you wrote that yesterday yeah yeah that's gonna be good though yeah i can feel it <laughs>